All right. Okay, today we have a, a sermon on Luke 10, 38, about Martha and Mary. Uh, anyone of you, are, are you familiar with Martha and Mary? Martha is a sister, or Mary, young, I think is younger, and uh, one day Jesus uh, visited them. And Martha was very hospitable and preparing uh, to treat Jesus and the disciples part of the goodies, the food and drink and stuff. Um, why don't we read this first? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we praise you as we have, every time we open the word, the Bible, we humble, humbly bow before you. May your Holy Spirit uh, draw us and lead us and guide us into your truth. And we commit this passage into your gracious hand. Help the one who preach and help those who listen. And may your truth um, uh, press in our heart and give us uh, conviction to follow your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, I, I, I entitled it, What's Important? Now, the, the test, I mean, the title of the sermon, What is Important? What's the most important in life? Uh, everything is important. Uh, you wash your face, you brush your teeth this morning, right? That's important. Uh, you cannot say, ah, you can skip that. Um, but what is more important, uh, probably to prepare a heart to come to worship God. It's more important than just dressed up and, you know, external preparation. But what's the most important? What's the most important in your everyday life? There's so many things that are important. I mean, everything is important. But what is more important, what's the most important? Maybe Jesus is teaching us through this event. Martha is doing things that are important. Mary chose Jesus at best, which is the most important in Jesus' eyes. All right, let's take a look. Uh, my friend, can you read for me? Uh -huh. Mac, uh, Luke 10, 30. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Some manuscripts, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Just two main characters here, besides Jesus. Martha, a very hospitable lady, uh, opened her home to Jesus and also his disciples. And uh, just like visitate, when, when a, a rabbi comes into your house, you treat them with uh, good food and, and uh, hospitality. Uh, so they will, they will be comfortable. Um, so Mary and Martha, they're sisters, so uh, it's, it's common, I mean, it's this reasonable to think that Martha and Mary should do it together, right? Because, uh, like, you go to visit someone's out doing a, a, visit, doing a dinner, uh, those who are busy in the kitchen. So, so the totally normal thing. But somehow, Mary, a little bit odd here, he, she chose to just sit right in front of Jesus and listen to his teaching. So Mary, Mary does, you know, that kind of make Martha very angry. Like, hey, I'm preparing a prime rib and, and uh, probably not prime rib, but all the good food, uh, but all so busy. I only have a pair of hands. The rest of uh, the guests are waiting. The guests are waiting. I, I'm busy preparing. And Martha, Mary just sitting there doing nothing. I'm so busy. Come on, Mary. And he, she actually went to Jesus and said, Hey, Jesus, I'm so busy preparing. Why don't you ask my sister, sister to come to help me? 
shouldn't she, right? That's the, that's the setting. That's the setting. Here you see. Uh, So Martha, verse 40, Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has let me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. So <clears throat> human level, that's understandable, right? I mean, you, you're cleaning up the house and, and your, your brother just watching TV, right? Something like, not totally the same thing, but... Uh, but the one who's working is kind of feel unhappy because I'm doing all the work and you do nothing. Uh, that's what Martha thought. But Jesus pointed out that he was, she was not watching football. She was not just listening to an opera. She was listening to the Lord, the Son of God, who came down from heaven, sitting right in, in their home. And teaching them about the truth of eternal life and salvation and God's love. And that's that's very, very precious. And um, anyway, I think the point Jesus tried to point out here is there are things that's important, like preparing a meal. And uh, the Mary chose. Jesus said the things needed, only the only thing that's really needed is to listen to God and obey him. And Mary has chosen what's better and will not be taken away. So Mary is cool. So Jesus continued to let Mary sit there to listen to his teaching. And uh, maybe they that would delay the, the dinner a little bit or the lunch. Next slide, please. So, distract by preparation. Uh, I, I've been Christian for many years. All the ministry got to be preparation. I prepare my sermon. Uh, I set, uh, We set up the chairs. Uh, we cook the meal. Every event, we have to prepare. The choir, they practice right in front of uh, the worship. Because we take it seriously about serving God, we prepare. But many times we are so distracted by the preparation. The preparation become our worship. It become our focus. All our focus about prepare to make the song sounds better, to make the sermon a, a little bit smoother, and to make the event go well. We prepare. But do not let preparation become replacing God and, and our hearts and our our uh, heart of worship to God is the what God looking for. Yeah, we can sing a little better, but God actually not, don't care, doesn't care about how well we sing if our heart is not there, right? He care about our heart first, and then hopefully the songs are in tune. <laughs> uh, so And the mother worry about many things. Uh, but Jesus said only one thing is needed. So, so maybe that's Jesus asking us what's important, what's more important, and what's the most important in life. Uh, one time I went to the airport. Uh, okay, suppose, okay, an illustration. We went to the airport and uh, we uh, prepare and everything uh, put in the car. And uh, it drove uh, four blocks away, and Shirley said, "Oh, I forgot to turn off the light." I said, "We're running out of time. We we late already." Oh, come on! It costs a lot of money not to turn off the light. So we drove back, and you know, did the whole thing. Turn, you know, unlocked the door and went up and and turn off the light, and we went back to the car. It's like ten minutes. Right, then we miss the fight. Mm -hmm. Right, important to turn off the light to save money, but it costs more money if you miss the fight 
and uh, didn't finish what we were supposed to do. There are many things in life that's important. You know, when you, when I uh, prepare for a trip, I usually write down a list. I have a list. Take a shower, <laughs> pack pack my luggage. So Mary, I mean, uh, Shirley said, "You're so stupid." Why, why you write down and take a shower? You know you have to take a shower. You know you have to pack. You know you have to uh, turn off the the, uh, the water heater, uh, blah, blah, blah. But I forgot. I, I mean, I just forgot. I, 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 if I don't have a list, I didn't cross it out. I, I, I forgot whether I did it or not. So I, I make that uh, mistake many times. So I, I, I had a to-do list every time I make a trip. Uh, But life, for example, money is important, right? Food is important. Clothing is important. Housing is important. All these are so important. But uh, let me, I suggest God is the most important. Without God, there's no house. If there's a house, there might be no love. Without God, all this will become food talk. Fertile and, and become our obsession and idiosyncrasy. Sometimes we grab all these things, uh, enjoying all the blessing God has given to us without enjoying God. Jesus said, verse 42, a few things are needed only, but only indeed one. Mary chosen was better and will not be taken away from her. I would say Mary was not doing the chores, but she was sitting right in front of Jesus, listening to his teaching. And maybe Jesus is suggesting to us, having a close relationship with God, with fellowship with him, calm down, quiet, listening to his word and his guidance. That relationship with God is more important than giving food to Jesus and to give him, him good drinks. Jesus would rather have Mary to sit and learn what he was teaching to her. Spiritual things are still indis indispensable. The only thing that is indispensable is spiritual thing, is our spiritual well-being. This body will wither. Doesn't matter how much food you eat, you enjoy, how big a house you have, uh, Eventually, it, it will just, we will pass off, we'll move on. Uh, we, will, we cannot carry a dime to heaven, no use in heaven. But if you don't have heaven, you can have all billions of dollars and you will not reach heaven. And what's, what's the benefit of that? If you gather, if you gain the whole world, but without having access to to God and eternal life, that that's a that's a bad bargain. That's that's a losing deal. Mary has chosen the blessing that cannot be taken away. That is a close and strong relationship with God. And today, may I suggest, while in your busyness, in your tight schedule, may God help us to find some time to be quiet. And sitting at God's feet and listen to his word. Open your Bible. Pray and listen to God's whispering to you. Otherwise, you will become so carried away by your schedule. And uh, it will be you'll be very so lost in the crossroads. And you may lose your way without being drawn to God all the time. And the price sometimes is too big. You know, sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his word brings spiritual growth. You know, every time you put down your schedule and your busyness and worship God and, and pray and listen to him, and they, that brings changes in life. In my life, all the big changes, all the big decisions are one-on-one -on -one with time with God. Even I listen to the sermon, 
but it's with a one-on-one -on -one decision I made with God that really changed my direction. You have to make decisions with God. You cannot just listening to God. It's like you had knowledge and oh, so many truths pass by you. And you and never hit your heart and you never respond. This is out of it's, it's just uh yeah, those are true, they're so wonderful. But what is my response to that piece of truth? I mean, respond to God and one on one time with God, pray, be quiet in front of Him. Sometimes you if you don't have that quiet time with God, you will lose that peace and uh you know confident in the Lord and you you just feel uh you know distract you're so distracted by many things just like mother here distraction distraction you know that close relationship with God is some cultivation I mean there are so many distractions in life um and maybe we need to be more uh, proactive when we come to spending time with God um schedule a time or or have a partner, uh, do it together, a uh, husband and wife. Uh, but it will not uh, happen when you don't have a determination. Just like exercise and uh, any discipline. If you don't dis have a passion to do it, it will, you will slowly um, be distracted. So this relationship, fellowship with God is the most important pursuit in a Christian life. And to love God and to walk with him is the highest priority in life. And uh, is that what we are seeking today? What is your highest priority in life today? What is my highest priority in life today? May God uh, ask us this question and we'll have an answer to him. Oh Lord, we just pray for ourselves as we in our busyness as, and uh, taking care of our life. There's so many duties and chores and things we have to take care of and you have asked us to be faithful, to be a steward, to have good stewardship, to manage our life. One of the most important things to manage is to remain in you to love you, to honor you, to walk with you. So God, if there, is there anything, any blessing you've given to us that distract us from you? Oh God, speak to us, open our eyes and know that you are the most important to be drawn into you, to embrace you, love you, have fellowship with you. It's the ultimate blessing in life. There's nothing, nothing more important than knowing God and know your will and know your know plan for us. So Lord, Take away all my distraction and all my brothers and sisters' distraction and help us to focus on you all the time because you are the ultimate pearl, the most, the most precious, precious gift in, in this universe. If we miss you, we are we are missing a whole lot. So give us that Holy Spirit uh, prompting then uh, every day. Um if we fall into the this trap like Martha. Oh God, we can uh, wake us up and guide us and teach us just like you taught Martha and to steer us to the right path. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Let me read this. Matthew, while they were eating, Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of vine, from now on until that day, I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. 
When they had sang a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So Jesus set up this uh, ceremony, this uh, uh, communion was to remember him, not to forget him, not to forget who God is and about his salvation and love and grace for us. So every time we come to the communion, it's a time to pause and examine our life and and also to remember how much Jesus loved you. Um, he laid down his life. The bread represents his physical body, his body, and uh, his uh, the cup re represents his blood shed for us to forgive our sin. So Jesus uh, laid down his life for us. And uh, let me read one more, two more passages. The, uh, Hebrews 10 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter, enter the most high, most holy place by the blood of Jesus, like the sacrifice, uh, without the blood of the sacrifice, sins cannot be forgiven. Now, through the blood of Jesus, we can be forgiven and we can enter into the presence of God. Verse 20, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that's his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with a full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving a meeting together as some are in the habits of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as to see the day of his coming approaching. Another one, Hebrew 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfect of faith. For the joy before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. May we have some quiet time on your own. I give you some time to pray. And we will start to come in later. If you're baptized, then you know what? You're going to join us. Thank you. May I ask Adam to pray, pray? Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you for giving the Christ to us so that we can have a relationship with you. Thank you. We just thank you to you. Amen.
And Jesus said, this is my body broken to you, so you take this to the remembrance of me. After that, he took the cup and said, this is the blood of the new covenant, saying to you for the forgiveness of sin. So his sacrifice on the cross, those who trust in him, our oh, sins can be forgiven. And also take this, take this to remember. Remember him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your eternal salvation for us. While the uh, before the foundation of the earth was uh, formed, God, you already have a plan uh, that's beyond our understanding. But and you, when the Almighty God has a plan, and He will definitely. Execute it perfectly and they will finish this work. So, Lord, give us faith in this uh, turmoil, in the turn, in this uh, shaking world that we're living in, all the walls, all the unknown. Oh, God, we just survived the pandemic and here we're in 2024. 20, 20, 20, 20, give us wisdom, and give us a heart to love you only, and bless uh, all my brother and sister as they chose to follow Christ and those who honor Jesus, Lord, you will honor them. So uh, give us strength to walk with you in the month of May and uh, give us vision, give us calling, give us opportunity to serve you. And uh, thank you for dying on the cross and for your resurrection and Take care of us until we meet you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Then. Uh...